Please be aware that the comments, views, opinions shared on this podcast are not meant to diagnose a medical problem and or legal problem. If you do have a medical problem or legal problem, kindly contact a professional. Friends, this is Jimmy Apple. Happy New Year! Welcome to an Apple a Day. Like I said, I'm your host, Jimmy Apple. An Apple a Day is brought to you by www.famousapple.com. I want to thank Emil Balecki for his rendition of Old Lang Syne. It's probably the weirdest one I've ever heard, and I thought it was funny as hell. So, how you feeling today, my friends? You all ready for a new year to come rolling in? Come rolling in a ho- like rolling thunder it's coming in on us. I'm ready. I'm ready. How was 2018 for you guys? Uh, some people said it was the worst year they've ever had. Some people said it was the best year they ever had. It was it was a year. It was good. It was you know what? We survived it. We survived the year. We may have had some trials and tribulations throughout it. But you know what? We survived it. Here it is. The end of the year. This is the last Friday in 2018 that we're going to get together. And we survived it. We're here. We're talking. We're laughing. We're listening to Emil. I don't know. Butcher a song. (laughs) He's really creative. Uh, But we're here. We're here, so it couldn't have been that bad. We survived the year, and we're going to survive next year and the year after. You know, before we even start, I want to just say something here. I read it, I think it was on Facebook, and it just stuck with me. You know, the situation that we're in, the situation that we're in right now is not our final destination. If it was, things would be all over already. We'd be done. We'd be gone. We'd be buried. But God has other plans for us. So you keep you keep on pushing. You don't give up. You don't give up. And God's not going to give up on you. And I don't want to sound like I'm preaching or... Because I don't care who you believe in. I personally believe in God. You could you pray to whoever you want to pray to, but that's who you that's who you look up to. They have plans for you. You don't give up on it. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. I thought it was a nice saying on Facebook and I seen it and I said, you know, that me mean, that means a lot when you really think about it. Because if we were at our final destination, we would have got off this train already. This this train that we call life. We would have been off and gone, but we're still on. So we have to ride it out and see where it brings us, right? So, how are you feeling? You, you doing everything you're supposed to do still? Have you made all your appointments for the year? Did you do them all? Did you do everything the therapist told you? Did you take all your medications? I hope so. Hey, I want to remind you, just in case you, you're not sure, even though you're collecting Social Security Disability or Workers' Comp, with the end of the year, you, you're you going to get that paper, that paper that tells you how much you earned last year. Social Security will send it out to you a couple of weeks into January. Just, you know, there's always been this, do I have to, do I have to file taxes? Yes, you do have to file taxes. Just keep that in mind. So file your taxes. When you get that form, it's one, two, three, very easy. You may even get money back depending on your dependents and what have you. So the answer is yes, you do have to file taxes. Some people say no. I asked an accountant. The accountant says, yes, you do. So I go by what the accountant said. If you're not sure and you don't think I'm right, well, definitely check on your own. Check with an accountant or H&R Block or somebody. But check. But I've been told that, yes, you do have to file taxes. So just watch for those papers in the mail. And just think, your next check 
your next check coming in has that increase on it, the 2.8% increase, uh, you, you, you probably say, I've heard people tell me, well, 2.8, what am I going to do with that? Wipe my, wipe my butt. You know what? 2.8 is better than nothing. It's better than zero. So look at the positive. Look at the positive on it. It's 2.8%. It's better than getting nothing. You know what I mean? A big part of New Year's is uh, New Year's resolutions, right? Boy, I tell you what, I would love, 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 love to own a, a gymnasium, a fitness club this, this time of year, every year. Because everyone and their mother says that they're going to lose weight for the new year and they go at it two feet first and they go out and they join a gym and they go there maybe for two or three weeks, maybe a month, and then they stop. And then the gym is empty. But every month, you know, because they all sign these contracts, every month the money's coming in. So all you have to do as the gym owner is go around and dust it off. You got a couple of diehards that may stay for the year. But all you got to do is go around and dust off the, the equipment. Maybe you could, open, you could open up an ice cream parlor on the side. But, you know, they do that. They, they join these gyms and they make these resolutions with the best of intentions. But most people are setting themselves up just to fail. You can't say, I'm going to give up this and I'm going to give up that. All these drastic things that you're going to give up. It's, it's a great thought. It really is. And I'm not knocking anybody for it because I always did the same thing. But the way to make a resolution is to set a goal that you can keep. It's more positive to say, not that I'm going to not do this anymore, but it's more positive to say, this is what I'm going to do and set a realistic goal. For example, you want to go to the gym? Okay. You could say, not that I'm going to, I'm going to the gym and I'm going to lose all this weight. You can say, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to work out twice a week. And I'm going to try to get myself in better shape. Instead of saying, I'm going to go and I'm going to drop all this weight. And those are two bigger goals. They're overwhelming. You have to cut out a big chunk of your life just to fulfill that one resolution. You have to make resolutions that fit into your life. You have to make positive resolutions, and it's more positive to say what you're going to do rather than what you're not going to do, if that makes sense. For example, you can say, I'm not going to spend any more money on junk. Well, that's a good thing, and you should try not to, but you want to save money, you should be saying, well, I'm going to put away $10 a week. And when you think about it, you put away $10 a week, that's $520 a year. And you set it up in little increments like that, $10 a week. At the end of the year, it's $520. Doesn't seem like a lot, but when Christmas comes around, $520. Hey, you know what I mean? The same thing, you want to lose weight. You could sit there and say, I'm going to cut out junk food and I'm going to lose 50 pounds this year. Again, you're setting yourself up to fail. You're going to lose 50 pounds. Well, you got a year to lose 50 pounds. But in that year, you could put on another 50. How about you just say, I'm going to try and knock off a pound a week. Doesn't that sound a little bit more realistic? A little bit more doable instead of what you, you know, that, that other stuff is nonsense. It, because what happens is, here it's January. I'm going to knock off 50 pounds this year. Okay. Now there's all these parties for New Year's. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to eat and I'm going to drink and I'm going to be merry. And comes February, I stand on a scale. I just gained 25 pounds. Now, in order to fulfill the resolution to myself, I have to knock off 75 pounds by the end of the year. That's a bit much, a bit much. You know, make resolutions that you know, that you know you can work at. Making these crazy big resolutions resolutions like people that say I'm gonna quit smoking this year I am going to quit smoking that's a great resolution but if you could quit smoking that easily you probably would have quit last year how about saying I'm gonna cut down on my smoking every week that's a little bit more doable than making this big announcement that you're gonna quit smoking being realistic with your resolutions makes it easier for you to actually keep your resolutions if that makes sense when you give yourself these big goals to overcome to to achieve you're setting yourself up for failure because what happens is if for some reason you fall off the wagon along the way you feel like a failure and then you just give up 
and you say, well, next year is another year. But if you have these smaller goals, it's much easier to climb back onto that wagon and get back up, dust yourself off and keep going. And now the same thing for us who are disabled. We have different things. I mean, we're not going to go out and go running. We're probably not going to go out and join a gym to to work out. But, you know, we have other goals that we have to keep too, like uh, making sure that we keep all our doctor's appointments. We've discussed this before, how easy it becomes to just, you know, beg off a doctor's appointment and just say, oh, I don't feel like going because it's in the middle of the day. We have to make a resolution to ourselves, and it's for ourselves, that we're going to make every doctor's appointment that we're given. Not try, because when you say, I'm going to try to make every doctor's appointment, you're, you're already making excuses because you're giving yourself an excuse. Well, I tried. No, you got to set it up in your head that you're going to make You're going to make every doctor's appointment. And God forbid something comes up, then it does. But you had it in your head. You were set to go. And that's the whole thing. And I don't want to sound, again, preachy or anything like that. But resolutions should be positive. They should be direct. They should be direct. We can't set ourselves up to fail. That's We've already had a, a hard enough time. And what we have to do is we're looking towards the future and we have to set ourselves up to get better each time, each year. We have to do better than we did last year. Each month, we have to do better than we did last month. We have to learn to deal with the disabilities that we're given. We, we have limits. We know we have limits, but we have to see how many of those limits we can, we can stretch, how many of those limits we can overcome. It's important. Important. It's important for us as disabled people not to just sit back. It's it, resolutions are very important to us as disabled people to give ourselves something like a kick in the ass to, to keep going. They're important for everybody. And I know you're saying, oh, resolutions, it's an old wife's tale. It's, you know, this, that, superstitions. And it's not. <laughs> it's really something that it can build character in us. I mean, how easy it is, is it for you to sit home and watch TV all day? seven days a week because you're disabled how is it how how easy is that very it's very easy i know people that 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 say it's the best thing since iced tea i don't know what they're thinking but this is why you make resolutions you you challenge yourself i know i do it i do it to myself all the time because i cannot I cannot let myself sit on a couch or sit in an easy chair and just stare at a, at a box all day. I can't. And you shouldn't either because the minute you do, that's you giving up. And like I said, this isn't your final destination. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep going. So make the resolutions. It may sound childish. People may look at you and go, yeah, okay. But make the resolutions. Even if you got to make them for yourself, write them down. Keep them. Send them in. I'll push you every week. I'll push you every week to make sure that you stay sticking to your resolutions. I'm going to put mine out there and you can push me. I appreciate the push, to be honest with you. Yeah, let's move on. Here's a couple of sample resolutions that came in through the website that readers shared with us. The first one is they resolve to go back to work this year. It's a good one. Second one is they resolve to walk. I don't know what's wrong with them, but they made a resolution that they're going to try to walk this year. They're going to work it out a little bit at a time each month, and by the end of the year, they hope to be walking. I hope so. There's resolutions that say they're going to make their doctor's appointments and resolutions that say they're going to make their therapist appointments. There's resolutions that say that they're not going to watch TV four days a week. Now, that's interesting. That's pretty good. One fellow says he's going to read more. Another one says he's going to write a book. <laughs> now, that's interesting. That I'd like, to, I'd like to read that book when it's done. So there's different things you can be doing. But come up with your own resolution. Send them in. And like I said, I'll push you on them. I'll push you every week. Like, like I've said right from the beginning, we're a community and we're here to help each other. Remember that. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. We'll be back in 30 seconds. An Apple a Day is brought to you by www.famousapple.com. Famousapple.com is the home site for this podcast. And there you're going to find connections to our Facebook page, our Twitter page. You're going to find connections to our private chat board, our private chat rooms. You're also going to find that we're sponsored now by As Seen on TV. And there's a lot of products displayed on the page for you to check out. So you get a minute, go over there, check out www.famousapple.com. Tell your friends about us. But don't go until we finish the conversation. Let's get back to it. And we're 
back. A mere 30 seconds. A mere bag of shells, if you will. Did you miss me? Don't lie. I know you did. <laughs> Anyhow, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank you. Thank you with all my heart for this opportunity that you've given me to have this podcast and to have the website famous apple when i first said to my friends and family that i was going to start a podcast everyone was like oh good it'll give you something to do and they said well what are you going to do it on and you know they came up with suggestions i said oh you rode a motorcycle for years do it on motorcycles and you were a truck driver do it on truck driver do it on cars do it on fishing and i look you know in the podcast catalogs and there's thousands of podcasts on motorcycles, cars, fishing, trucks. And the one thing that I wanted to do it on was disability. And when I said I wanted to do it on disability, they looked at me like I had three heads. And they said, what would make you think that people are going to listen to a podcast about disability? And I said to them that I want to make it different. And like one person said, you're not a doctor. I said, that's what makes me different. I'm not trying to be a doctor. I'm trying to be a friend. I'm the friend that I want that that can tell you, look, if you go to disability, it's better to call them on the phone and, and set up an appointment rather than go and wait in line. Or you have to file your taxes if you're on disability. You know, I didn't know any of this stuff. I knew nothing. And trying to find out was like pulling teeth. And the only thing I could, was able to get was papers from the government. And back then, even still, I mean, they've made it a lot easier. But back then, reading the papers from the government was like trying to read the encyclopedia and filling out the forms for disability. I remember when I filled out the forms for disability, there was no computers. It was like a book that you got and you had to fill out this whole thing questions and questions and questions, essay questions, you name it. And then you had to attach doctor's records and all this other stuff. And it was like a, it was like a full-time job for about two weeks to fill it out. And then you had to send it in. And then you had to go down for their examination. In my case, I was in the Bronx at the time and I had to go to Manhattan for it and out to Brooklyn and all over. And they've made it so much easier now. But it was, it was difficult and it was confusing and it was frightening at, at times. And not knowing what to expect is the worst. And that's where this podcast came in. You know, trying to explain some of that. Trying, Like I said, having a friend that you could turn to and say, what's going to happen or what can I expect? Like the first time I got that checkup letter, you know, you get it every three years. The first time I got it, my my heart skipped a beat three times. I opened that letter. I'm like, why are they questioning me? I didn't do anything wrong. And then I started thinking and they wanted lists of what doctors I went to through for the last three years. I don't know what doctors I went to for the last three years. And I had nobody to turn to. I called Social Security, waited on, waited on hold for about an hour and a half at that time. And the woman said, well, just, you know, as best as you can remember. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then I started thinking, well, if I lose my benefits, how am I supposed to support myself? And all these things went through my head. I couldn't sleep for a month waiting to get a response. If only I had someone that could turn around and ask. Someone that could tell me, look, don't worry about it. Just do your best with it. I had nobody. And that was what the whole idea of this podcast was, is that be that somebody that people can turn around to and say, Maybe you might know a little bit about this or be able to say, well, look, I'm not sure. Go to this one. Or if I'm not sure about something, I try to look it up. When people ask me a question, I try to find the answer for them just because not because I'm smarter than them. It's just that I've been at this for a little bit longer. I mean, think about it when you got to go for surgery. Now, unfortunately, in my time here, I've been through so many surgeries. And before this, I had never been I had never been sick. I had never been sick. Now, I've had three heart attacks, I've had yeah, three heart attacks, three strokes, I've got more stents, more metal in my heart than I do in my car. I mean, and, but it's frightening when you first, when you first hear you're going for a catheterization. My father died of a heart attack and I remember him going for a catheterization and him explaining it to me and I was young when he went. And they went through his groin, and all I could think of was he went into the groin with a with a wire, and oh my God, it was horrendous. And I thought my father was like Superman. How did you even survive this? And now 
I've been th- I've been through a catheterization. I believe it's sixteen times, and I've survived all sixteen. <laughs> I've had parts amputated, parts cut out. I've had bypasses done, and I've survived, thank God. But I knew nobody when I was going through this. Nobody I could turn to and say, what's it like? But maybe that's, maybe that's my calling. Maybe that's why I'm still here, so I can tell others, look, don't be scared. Don't be scared. It, it's not as bad as it sounds. People, people, for some reason, people that have never been through it seem to like to tell you the, the worst that could happen. But... It's not as bad as you think. And that's what the whole idea of this podcast is, is to let you know things aren't as bad as you think. So thank you. Thank you for letting me be here. Thank you for for coming here to to talk with me. I really appreciate it. Because not only only do I think I'm, I'm trying to help you, but you're helping me by letting me express these things. So my friends, and I truly mean that, I consider you all my friends, have a happy healthy, and prosperous new year. I hope to hear from you. I hope to hear from you all. And I want you to remember, things can always be worse. Right now, there's somebody striving to be where you're at. Remember that. So my friends, from my home, my family, to you and yours, Happy New Year. This is an apple a day. My name is Jimmy Apple, and we're going to exit out of here with Old Lang Syne from the United States Marine Corps Band. Have a great week. Have a great New Year's. And I'll see you next year, next Friday. Have a good one, my friends.